Hello, this is Hans van der Kwas, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to derive the catchments, or rather the subcatchments, of uh, multiple outlets that are automatically detected from a DEM. And we'll use the PC Raster tools in QGIS for this. In another video, I've demonstrated how to do that using the Python scripts with PC Raster. Here we'll use the user interface of QGIS. We're going to follow uh, the following workflow. First, we need to convert the DEM GeoTIFF to the PC Raster format in order to apply the PC Raster tools. Basically, the tool performs uh, a GDAL translate. And then uh, we can derive the local drain direction map from the DEM, which is basically a flow direction map and that forms the basis of all kinds of flow analysis in the PC Raster tools. And we use that as an input to calculate the Strahler orders. Then we will check uh, by styling which Strahler orders uh, we consider as rivers. And uh, we use the raster attribute table to create a lookup table to reclassify those uh, Strahler orders to the ones that belong to the river. Then we can compare the Strahler order of the downstream pixels. And uh, if there's a difference, it means we are at a junction and this is an outlet of subcatchment. So in this way we can derive the outlets and then we use those outlets as an input to derive the subcatchments. And meanwhile, uh, with a few of these steps, we also need to convert the data type and uh, check how uh, the Boolean layers are with uh, no data or the zeros, etc. So you'll see this all in the next steps. So let's convert the GeoTIFF to the PC raster format. And uh, because it's a continuous raster, we choose the scalar output data type. And I save it to a file. Make sure you choose the .map format. And I can remove the GeoTIFF, not to get confused. So the next step is to derive the LDD map from the DEM. And we use LDD create for that. And uh, we're going to fill all the sinks. That's what this tool does. And it ends up with the flow direction map, the LDD map, local drain direction layer. So I keep here uh, all the defaults and just specify an output file name. Call it LDD, and I run it. It takes a bit because this is quite a, an intensive tool. And here's the result, and the flow directions are encoded uh, with the same numbers as your numeric pad. So it starts with 1 in the southwest, and then to 2 is south, and 3 is southeast, etc. Now we can use the stream order tool to derive the Strahler orders. The local drain direction map is an input, and the Strahler orders are the output. I'll save it as Strahler. And the output will be an ordinal raster with the order numbers for each pixel, starting with one and ending with the maximum that it finds in the study area. So we can style the layer because it's uh, ordinal. We need to use the palleted unique values. And we use blues. So the bluer, the bigger the river. And there we see that it found 10 orders. So now we can add an attribute table um, and choose the GDAL format. We need that later to do the reclassification. And you can do this using the uh, raster attribute table plugin. I've added OpenStreetMap from the browser panel because we are now going to calibrate which Strahler orders we consider as rivers. So we compare the results by removing stepwise from the lower, lower orders to the high orders and see if we get comparable results as with the OpenStreetMap rivers. If for your study area OpenStreetMap is uh, incomplete with regards to rivers, uh, you can also use a satellite image as a background. So you need to end up with a threshold value 
for which you consider that the strata orders uh, are reflecting well the rivers in the study area. I think here it's uh, around seven or eight that gives a good fit. And in certain areas it will fit better than in other areas depending on the land use, the human manipulation and the uh, geology. And when I follow then the Strahler approach, we need to renumber it um, to 1, 2, 3 and 4 for the order 7, 8, 9 and 10 from the raster derived Strahler orders. Now we can create a lookup table using this attribute table. And we want to get rid of the low orders. So I go to editing mode and make the orders until 6, uh, 0, and the rest 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I save it. And we can use then the lookup table from raster attribute table tool. Make sure you choose the Strala order layer. And I'm going to save it. So this will be a PC raster lookup table format. And this is how it looks like. But we don't want the zeros, we want no data. So we only end up with the channels, one, two, three, four, Strahler order, and uh, the rest of the raster will be no data. Then we can use the lookup tool. And we choose Strahler as an input, then our lookup table. And the result is ordinal. And then I run it. And we end up with an ordinal layer. So I use palette of unique values. And it's better to use blues. And there we see the four orders and uh, the background is uh, no data. The next step is to know what Strahle order value the downstream pixels have. So I use the downstream tool and the flow direction is an input and we use our Strahle channels as an input and then we derive the output, which gives us for all these river pixels, the downstream uh, Strahle order value. And we end up uh, with the same amount of order, so that looks good. So with some map algebra, we can then find out where the junctions are. So go to the raster calculator. You see that it recognizes the PC raster maps too, because it's a GDAL format. And I say where the Strahler channels uh, values are not the same as downstream. We have junctions, so it will be Boolean true, the otherwise Boolean false. Uh, remember that you can only save it here as a TIFF file and not to the PC raster format. That doesn't work. And here we have our junctions, uh, but we have to style it in a proper way in order to see it. So it's Boolean. And here we see in red those junctions. So we're almost there because those are the outlets of our subcatchments. Now before we can further process this, we need to convert this output back to a PC raster format. And uh, we choose the Boolean output data type. It's called it junctions. Make sure it's a dot map format. We run it. And what we want in the end is that each uh, catchment has a unique value because now it's only a Boolean and that wouldn't be uh, very interesting to look at. So I'm going to add a unique value using the unique ID tool. So each of these Boolean points will get a unique number starting from one to the maximum that it finds. And uh, here we see that there are many. And that will be the numbers also of uh, the catchments that we will derive. Now the problem is that the unique ID tool uh, produces a scalar output and we want it in a nominal format. So therefore we need to convert the data type of the output of the unique ID. 
So we go to convert layer data type. And we change the data type to nominal. It's also because the catchment tool uh, can't deal with scalar. It needs to be Boolean, ordinal, or nominal. And now it has the right data type. Now the only problem is that uh, the catchment tool will calculate it for non-zero values and expects also zeros. So we need to create a layer with zeros that are nominal. And then we can use the cover tool where we choose the junctions ID nominal layer and we are going to fill the node data with the nominal zeros and we choose then an output name which will be the outlets. So with the cover tool we fill the node data with data from another layer or multiple layers in a sequence. So this is the result and now we can use the catchment tool which uses the LDD and the outlets. And here we have our catchment. Let's style it to make more sense out of this. And here we see for each of those uh, unique numbers of outlets uh, the catchment to which it belongs. There's also another tool called subcatchment, and uh, because the catchments are uh, nested, uh, which means that if uh, a more downstream outlet uh, is used, that uh, it will cover also the upstream catchment. Now the subcatchment tool doesn't do this, so it will contain all the subcatchments, but of course then it uh, cuts the nested ones. So here we can see the result. And we end up with many more subcatchments compared to the catchments tool output. So it just depends on what you want. And people also often ask uh, why don't we get the Strahler order numbers there? And we can use the area maximum tool, that's an easy way to derive it. Because we have our Strahler orders and we have the catchments. So if I take the maximum value within the catchment then it will give me back the Strahler orders in this uh, in these subcatchments and if I use blues there then we see the different orders clearly for each uh, of these derived subcatchments of course in GIS there are other ways to come to the same result but uh, this was the easiest to get the Strahler orders assigned to those derived subcatchments now this was a lot of clicking and uh, there are multiple ways to automate this. So there's another video that explains how to do this with uh, Python code. Uh, but you can also make a graphical model out of this in QGIS. Or you can uh, create separate tools like a junction tool uh, or a derived river tool uh, by uh, modifying the scripts uh, from the PC raster toolbox here in uh, QGIS, which is not uh, too difficult if you know a little bit of programming.